That's like something completely different. That's what we do way before all these arts. Yeah, but this is the most important piece out of everything. If you don't have this, you have nothing. Because that 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 you can, gives you an idea of what the what the, exact, the are and what the. This not only idea. I want to make sure that you understand this. This is not a rough draft. This is the exactly how your app is supposed to work. If your app has something that does not in here, you better put it in there. Otherwise, you start making your code. What are you going to reference? Your head, your mind, the memories? It's not going to work. You're going to you're going to no, trip over your feet. Like, like technically, that could help you find bugs. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I don't know, like I feel like I need some project that that will allow me to do this. That will allow me to to I don't like I, I can't think of like I can't think of different you know ways to like come up with this stuff. It's like when we did a sequel, it's like find find things. So we had to go there. We had we had things on the side. We can hundred percent. So if you want, if you want, before we're in chapter six, we can do that. We can do that. We can make a thing. We can do that. By the end of the book, we'll start getting into. We can. This book just teaches you the building blocks. After that, when you build the apps, you put all this together. And, we want we can stop right now. After chapter the five, stop for a couple days that we can build a teeny app that's off the command line. Or even if even if we that's the thing. My question is, is it worth going? Here's what I'm saying. Chapter six is where it completes chapter five, right? Chapter six completes chapter five. Yeah. You can, yeah. You can so if, if I were to do chapter five and chapter six and then we did that, is it worth to do by chapter six or is it better to do it now? That's what I'm asking. Chapter six really this is really enough. Chapter six really just goes into a little more Things in the, in the array list, things in more of the Java API. But the, but the concepts. The you have enough right now to. So this to is, then, then make it concrete. Now you put these down, you know, if, if, maybe I can do it on the side myself, but I would definitely love to, to know this because I think it's important once I get this down. You know, that's right. If you feel it's not, if it's not, that's not concrete, no. then definitely you should do that. And you know, the beauty of this, of having a homework like this, is that if you guys do it separately, you will, we will all come back with four different ways. Even a simple app, you'll see four different ways of making code. Right. Okay, we can do that. This is enough. That'd be a, a good test. You want? We can. You'll have to bring in everything. You, the, yeah. the flowchart, the UML, you know, um, everything. But your pseudocode as well, and the real code. Make sure to make testers first. You know. Yeah. Okay. So then I have to think of a of an yeah, example. Yeah, need to think on what you're gonna do. It. Make no. it simple. Does it be day? No, I'll do that simple. Because I, I want to feel like when I walk away, oh, are you going to give us something? Yeah, I'll think of something. But you know what I'm saying? Like you want to walk away from it saying, oh, I got it. Hundred percent. I mean, the the the, the good thing about it is that this book takes you through building the end of the, end of the book. You'll be building a really cool application. A place that uses, you know, like an instant messenger, passing over files across the internet. You know, I mean, really advanced stuff. Yeah. So it's not like the book doesn't just takes you through the baby steps. It really takes you to a full blown application like WhatsApp. I mean, you'll have in this book enough knowledge to build your own WhatsApp application. It might not be as robust as theirs. You might have to, you know, learn how to make it more quicker for using a million users. But the core concepts of making an application that works as an instant messenger across the world, you do. So the book takes you through that. But you're right. If you're not getting, if, if five is still in theory for you, you should stop doing homework. What do you say, Greg? What do you say, Mandy? I don't care. I want to say both. Okay, so let's do that. I'll, we'll finish sure. up chapter five today. Look, I can always move on if. If, you know, comes to a point where I just feel like it's getting repetitive. So I mean, I don't mind. Yeah, but you know, would you like? Let it do whatever you want. If you want to, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to. I'd love to do homework. Why not? Okay, that's always good. Okay, so we'll do that. I'll, I'll think of something. Okay, so let's finish off. So, do you want to do a refresher again, or you have enough more well, today? I, I, the whole the concepts I got. I just okay. doing it is the hard. Fine. Part. So then let's go on to some more specifics yeah. of of um these last things. So the for loop. Do we, uh, does everyone get this for loop about the? Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about this. Yeah. Okay, so let's go. Let's go into that. Ready? If you look over here. Here is a loop. Yeah. Okay. If you notice, the loop goes from here to here. It's very short. And let me let me actually just take out this right now. Do you are you starting to record it or is it? It's recording, yeah. Welcome, everybody, by the way. Okay, so here's the code. Let's walk through it so you get it. Okay. Okay, so remember, what is location cells? There's a box. Okay, so location cells is an array. Right, an array is just a list. And that's a number, by the way, that, that actually location cell is one of the words of Java. No, no. Look, 
look at the code, location cells is over here, which is this. Oh, okay, location cells is an integer array. And it oh, right, there's not really Java isn't like an it has, doesn't have an extensive vocabulary. Most of the stuff here we did it. Java we, no, we did we did the list. Yeah, the keyword. Yeah. It was like what fifty words. That was it. No, I'm just being like uh, yeah. memorizing. Location yeah. is the word in Java that you can use. What? Location. No. It, the, all the words you hear, you see in the orange color, that's the ones you can't use. And even that is not really so true. For example, integer you only can't use because they already called the class integer, but it's not really one of their keywords. Same thing for system. These are not real keywords. They just have, they made a class that we're using called system and called integer. Okay? Something like that, it's just using system.outprintln. So. But it's not even a keyword. In other words, you can make another thing called system. It was just, we'll overwrite this. Yeah, but. As These long you as cannot you don't use at all. Get a capital letter unless you. We have to because classes. Well, let's look at a letter. This is actually. Well, let's not get this. This is a letter. I'm learning why. No, I'm saying like unless you're you're actually calling it like let's say the the you know the the no. class itself is called system. You know unless you use public class system. Or right. Okay. So this this is um, location cells is what. Uh, location cells is the, is the, the array. Yeah. yeah. So it's an integer array, right? It's a a instance variable that's pointing to an integer array, right? So it's an object, okay? Over here, we're creating a local variable called integer, which is cell, which is, is an integer. This cell, this loop over here, right? From here, oops. Where's my thing? Oops. Okay, from here, this right here is the loop, defines the loop, right? What it's going to do is going to go through the location cells. So location cells has, say, five cells in there. Okay? Say here's bucket one, bucket two, bucket three, oh, you know what? bucket oh, four. Okay, I get it. I get it. Okay. So, and, here, and this one, say there's nothing in there. Say it's empty. But we hear, which would be zero, right? Because remember, there's no such thing as empty for, for primitives. Yeah, you, you did actually. Say so this is zero, this is zero, this says one, this says two. Okay? So this one. We'll loop through it. At loop one, it's going to be zero. At loop two, it's going to be zero. Loop three, it's going to be one. Loop four, it's going to be two. That's what it does. Okay? Int cell, this loop means, for int cell colon location cells, means loop through location cells, loop through this, and at each point... There's six location cells you're talking about. There's six the location cells, there are arrays six. Okay, so there's six, and here's four of them, let's put six in there. Okay, right. so here's zero, and say here's five, whatever it is. I'm just making this up. What's inside there? Okay, so it's going to loop through this. Okay. okay, so at point, at loop one, cell will be equal to what? Zero. zero. Loop two. Zero. Loop three. One. Loop four. Two. Okay. Zero. Okay, so that's why we can ask if guess, which is get what they what they entered, does one equal the cell? No. Does it two? Okay, so loop through it. If it finds it in this list. Boom! He's got one of the one of the spots. That's how that works. Num of oh, num hits plus plus just means increment by one. Okay. Okay. And then break Yeah. Uh, but can you explain why we use for not while? Why we use for not while? Well, this whole idea of putting this cell, the location cells, mm -hmm. only works the for loop. Otherwise. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out what when when you use and, for when you Okay, so actually we're gonna discuss that now in more detail. Right now we're actually gonna do that. But this type of for loop, which is an enhanced for loop, you could only use with this. It's an enhanced for loop. Right. So you can't even use it with while, you don't have the option. Okay? Let's actually go on to what he asked why what's the difference between for and while when you use each one. Okay. Um just one side note thing. I'm not gonna go into that because really just, just don't do it. Why? There's num hits plus plus, which increments. And there's plus plus num hints, which are also increments. Just don't do that. <laughs> do num hints plus plus. Okay, because there are uh, there are minor weird things that can happen if you do the other way. Okay? Just don't do it. <laughs> okay, if you want to look at the book for the nuance, why the, what's the difference, but just, just don't even have to do the issue. Okay, break just gets out of loop early, right? Okay? Why do we why do we have break over here? Because the, the loop would go on and on and on and on and on. It wouldn't go on. It would go on to the end of location cells. Oh, well, then it would go back. It would go to what? Go back. Sorry. It would go back. Sorry again. No, but then it would just go through. Uh, Crash. 
No. Nope. Break bench. Break. Just break over here just to get out early because there's no reason to go on. <laughs> That's the only reason why it, it is. is. Once you hit the three, then you break. What in this example? If he, you know, if he puts in, uh, say he guesses one and hits one, right? We don't really have to break, but we're breaking because our code, anyways, doesn't make a difference to go to the end. All we need is if you hit the spot, you hit the spot, you can get out of the loop. There's enough. There's no reason to go on in the loop. Okay. But we don't have to break because the loop only goes on until the end location cells. So here, there's only six. There's no difference. But if you had imagined a million cells, you want to get it out right away. You don't have to waste time doing right. the whole thing if you know you're there already. Right. But break just gets out early. In this R code, actually, so if there wasn't it. break, and let's say, up to, let's say, the third part of the, the array was a hit, you would have to go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six again just to get to the next part. Or say again. Say he entered. He one. Entered, let, let's say one, right? Okay. One is a, a hit. I said. I, I, when it when it hits loop three. When it hits loop right. Loop okay. Three. So if break wasn't in there, it would go to two, zero, and five. Which no, are? he's saying you know what? Whenever, whenever it looks at it, does it have to go to four in order to get to the two? No, 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 no. That's exactly no. I'm just asking if it has to go through the whole entire array after, after you got to hit anyway. No, because it's break. Because of break, right? It just like stops it all together and go. then it asks you for the next number. Here we go. Not having to go. So right, that's right. exactly. Yeah, right. but I'm asking on top of that. I'm saying. Every time it says location cell, you do that. Sorry, you do the situation. Is it running through zero, zero, one, and then let's say I I put the number two in there, right? Okay. Is it going to go or two? You know that in that position, whatever. Am I going to write zero, zero, one? It's going to go zero, zero, one, two, two. Okay, wait. Or it's going to go. It's going to every single time go through the whole thing. Finally, if you don't do break or if you do do break, it goes in this order. If you know we do the indexes, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It goes in this order. Right. So, so if it was a million and one, it would go through a million and then get to the million. And one. Yes, if it's in that order, yeah. I was thinking for time wise. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we'll actually learn in the next chapter in the array list, which actually is much better than these, and is a much easier to use. You don't have to do loops. You can just go ask, does this exist in this array? Uh -huh. But that's for next chapter. Okay. There's no loops. No loops. Much easier. <laughs> next chapter. Loops are like. Oh, no. Yeah. Really nice. Like, in SQL and SQL. If you have to use a loop, it means you're a bad programmer. In SQL, what? SQL, if you have to use a loop, it means you're a bad programmer. It means you don't understand how SQL works. <laughs> but uh, loops are loops are called the devil in programming. They really usually mean you're, it's a, something's wrong with your code, or you're just using the wrong tools. Like for example, if, though over here you have to use if you don't know the, the Java library. Yet. Java library is a code they give you, right? Which is called API, the Application Programming Interface. It's just classes, but they give you off the bat. They give that in the next chapter one called an array list, where you can actually easily just go, hey, here's an array list of all these numbers. Does two exist in this array list? Yes or no? That's it. And it does it all the work for you. So you're saying generally in the long run, we'll almost never need four while. Like I can say you won't. You probably use it quite often because it's not it's not SQL, so it doesn't have the power that SQL has okay. to get away from the loops. But you should, if you're facing a lot of loops a lot of times, look into it. You might just want to create a class that can get, get rid of that. In other words, for example, their array their array list that I learned in the chapter probably behind the scenes uses a for loop. But at least we don't have to deal with that from our perspective. And they put it behind code. Okay, let's move on. Okay, we're moving on. So we got we got that down. Break just gets out early. Okay? Let's go now to the right? Here we go. From the first version of Java, there has been a single kind of for loop. We just learned another one called enhanced for loop, which is this one, right? This is the enhanced one of looping through an array. But in general, this is the standard for loop. Okay? I don't, I don't get the idea of having so many freaking loops. Like, why can't you just have an if loop and a while loop? If is not a loop. If tech, okay, right. So why can't you just have a while loop? Okay, so I'm going to explain right now. But I need to do this, this, is, this is exactly why. When and So seven. right now, as of now, you've only learned for and while and an enhanced for. This enhanced for is just cool to use because it it goes through a loop, it goes through a list very easily. Okay, but for everything else, say you want to go from one to ten, right? This will loop from one to ten. Why can't you just do while? What? Okay, so let's let's look at that right now. Um, okay, before I continue. You can use this format for any kind of loop you need. You see this? For anything. Let's take let's take a look at this right now, actually, so we can. Um, no, right over here, actually. 
Right here is a, is a good example. <coughs> okay, so this is up. This is the standard for loop. Okay, so what does it do? It, this is going to loop. The, it's going to first set, this is called the initialization parameter, which means I'm going to set i to 0. I make an integer, I make it 0. Then I make the Boolean test to say when you continue to loop. Well, if i is less than 100, continue to loop. Then I say what to do at each loop to increment. I increment by 1. So this is going to loop 100 times. And then you put inside there whatever you want to go in, inside to do, to those 100 loops. OK? So why do you need this? Well, you need this to know when it's true, to continue. So basically, that whole beer song that we did, technically, you can just do for integer i equals 0, right? Then you do the semicolon i is smaller than 100, i plus plus, and then the code that you go in there, that you would put in there, is just uh, 99. You would do the system out printing with 99 bottles of beer minus one for each each time it loops. Yes, so we did a while loop over there. Right. And, and you could have made, made it a whole massive thing. You could have you could have used the for loop, yeah. And you're it would have done like easier? five lines. Can I do something. can I do exactly what you just did before loop and just write while in front of it? Well while's a little different because remember while doesn't have initialization. And it doesn't have it doesn't even have incre in increment. All it has is this part. Which, what it doesn't have increment. You can't write I plus plus in, in the while loop? You can do it inside the body of it, which is what you have to do. Well, let, here, let me, let's give an example. Okay, look at while. No, while, by while, while is five. Is five, is five here, watch. While Here's an example. five is smaller or greater than something. You can't do while 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 or while one. Here, this this one this this will help clear up everything. This will be this will clear up everything. Okay, you see the difference over here, guys? This is they this these two things are the same exact thing. They loop from one to eight and print it out. So you'll be on the, you'll see anything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, done. Right? This is the while loop. They essentially do the same thing, but look we have to put things. For loop is so much simpler because everything is in this in this line. By a while loop, I have to increment in the body. First I have to go into integer i equals zero. Right, even before the while loop, you have to make the integer and set it to zero. And then inside here, so things are all over the place. You have to find out where it's initialized, where it's incremented, where is the, the Boolean test. It's all over the place. By four, everything's in this in here. And then next chapter, we're going to learn that we don't even need four. Well, you're going to need four for many things. We don't need it for a list. But if you're wanting to loop a hundred times, you won't so need it for lists. When, when you're working, let's say, and, you have, when, and you're working on a program or whatever it is, yeah. you won't see while loops. Well, I'll tell you why you'll need it, and you'll see in a second. If you notice over here, a for loop, let's go back to the code. You understand? You see why? You see the difference over here? There's three things of loop. Initialization of setting what's the first, what, what are we starting off with? Is it 100? We're starting off with 5? What's the, what's, number 2, what is the Boolean test to continue the loop? And number 3, what are we incrementing by? Right? I don't have to do i++, plus plus. I can do i plus 10. You know what I mean? Um, for loop in general is much better than while because it keeps everything in one line. So you have to say when you can use while, we'll find out right now. In general, use for. If you can use for, use a for loop. Okay? So let's go back here for a second. We're already thinking of pseudo code for the 99 bottles of beer. Would that be counted as homework, by the way? I want, I, want to, I want to give a better one. Better one. Why? We can all give it our own little thing, as long as it works. I want to give more that has different classes involved if you have the game. You have a couple different classes. You can technically do it. Okay. Just know that this this that. Okay. Let's go over here. Okay. So here is the key difference. Choose for loops over while loops when you know how many times you want to repeat the loop code. Okay. So if you notice over here. If you notice over there here, or, or repeat the code eight times. Yeah, if you notice over here, we know right off the bat that it's it, it, for if this is the this is the, the boolean test. It has to be under eight, right? Right. And we know that that's how it works. 
statement. Sometimes what? If there's an if statement, then you want to use well. What do you mean? Because if, if, if there's if statement, you don't know how much how much is less. If you don't know the boolean, you're saying if you don't know the boolean, if we're saying when, let's say, uh, I don't know what. Okay, say the boolean, but say we don't even we don't know too many details of how many things are in the list. How, how do you, for example, say you have a, a list, you don't know how big it is. Right? How are you going to do it in a for loop? You just add the length. You just, what? yeah, the length. That length. Okay, well, that's not the right. Uh, okay, no. I, okay that's, yeah, that's a good answer. Okay, how about I give you one? Say you have one that that every single minute checks the alarm to see if something, you know, if checks through the, say one that you're in an alarm system. And every Updates. 10 seconds, it does a, a, a zoom around the house to see if anybody's there. Okay? All the windows are, are locked still. Right? And if it's not, that's when it calls the police. If it sees that one window's open, it calls the police. But every single minute, it continues to loop. It doesn't have to continue to loop once the window's open. It calls the police and stops doing it. So how would you know when to end that loop? It's looping forever until it hits that point. Right, that's what you're saying. So in that case, you just do while this is true. Right? And then it'll loop forever, and until you hit the point where you can break, and you say the windows are closed, and you break out of it. You can't do that in a for loop. Right. Right. All you would do, for example, is you go like this. Oops. You would have a, like this while, and can we really just do this? You know, maybe say we have a variable. Um, you know, all r r Windows locked. Okay, that would be your. Man, there's a boolean thing. It can right. be true or false. Then, then do what's ever in in that thing, right? You know what I mean? And then in here you can have a statement that'll look through. You know, look through on the house, etc., etc. But if you know there is and sound alarm. broken, right? Sound the alarm and stop the loop. And the break, sound the alarm break, break. right? So that you can't use in a for loop. But you should know that 99% of the time, you do know how to get to the end of the list. You use, use for. But for security, you'll use a lot of allows. For things where you don't know the end, which is very rare. Security systems are one of them, where you're looping forever. Right. But so in, other than security, you're almost never going to hit. Right. There are, yeah, there are. If you'll hit, every so often, you'll hit some stuff we don't know the end of it. OK, but just for now, use for loops for everything. If you hit an array until we learn chapter 6, use the enhanced loop that we just did, you actually, you know, we, how would you do it? If I was writing a program where I wanted someone's mouse to, to go over the screen, and every time I went over the screen, it would, it would send me information, or if it went over the screen, it would pop up or something. We're going to add on. The Java has all the stuff. Does that work under a while? I'm not so sure. What's the, what's, the, what's the loop? The, well, every time you're, it's constantly looping, saying every time your mouse goes over something, it, I would take the data. So it's while you're moving your mouse, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll learn about it later. While mouse move, while mouse move. We even have to do that. You don't have to do that. Right. There's no, there's no while loop in that. Then later on, okay. because you'll see that later on when you create things, GUI interfaces, right? All this is a GUI. Right. You can create things that notice when the mouse is over it. Oh, seriously. Okay, there are events. So create method, a method basically that. We'll learn later on. It's a little more complicated, but it has to do with events. When you go over this, when I click, is an event. If I go like this, that's one event. If I hold down for three seconds, it's an event. If I Click lightly each event. <laughs> okay, but we'll learn that later on. So don't, don't, you don't want to make yourself a sugar just yet. Okay, minus minus is also weight of of. Same plus plus plus. Yeah, it goes down by one. Okay, plus plus goes up by one. Minus minus, minus goes down by one. Plus 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 plus. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Actually, it should be C minus minus. Okay, so now let's do some of these. Um, we're gonna look at the this this thing. Remember the so. In the game, we have to. Let's open the. Where is the game itself? Okay, if you notice the game, so we have to make some random spots, right? Random, a random place to put it, right? Is this, this, spot? Spot. this is this is the code. I can actually send you guys the code if you want to just look at it. Well, over. I got up there. I got almost up to there. I didn't get those, those. Okay, I so here we 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 the the code makes. Three locations, and it has to be lo uh, three locations from one to seven, right? So what does it do? Oh, we no, take it. Like it. We get a math random number, 
which remember is less than one. Remember this is the first chapter. There's. So say it's point whatever it is, and times it by five, so we get something more than one, and then we convert it to an integer. Why is that? Times by five is not one. An integer can only be a whole number, so right. that automatically right. rounds it to the nearest. Yes. Right. right. It's not even rounding. It's, it's truncating. It just takes off the decimals. Why five and not It doesn't round. If it's four point nine, it'll still be four. It won't be five. Ah. Uh, it just truncates it. Is there a way to make it round? Rounded, yeah. Later on, we'll learn some math. Just some math. Maybe just math, math dot round, whatever it is. Okay. Um, so that's why we're doing it. And regular asks why making it times five? Because it has to be, we're over here, we're going to do oh, plus really? one plus two. And we have to end off by seven max. So say he, say we get, say it lands to be four, so you get four, five, six. Right? Which in a, which in an array oh, is. Oh, five, six, seven. Oh. Okay? That's why we do like that. But this is, so we actually had this before, this idea. When you do this. I still don't get the times five, times five. Because math random always gives you a number that's less than one. Right, we hit the end, so what it's worth. But it'll always be zero. If we convert less than one, 0.99 or 0.75 or 0.5, it's always going to be zero. Right. So you have to times it by five to make it above zero, which is either going to be one, two, three, or four, and then use that number. So whatever the random number, random number plus one, random number two would be, even if it's seven, eight, nine, it doesn't really matter. Well, it will be seven, but one times it by five. Sorry, so it would be five, six, seven, or six. Not even five, it would be, be four. So four, four, five, six. Right, four, five, six, or three, four, five, or two, four. And if eight, I have seven spaces, so it would still be four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 uh, what if I have an array with, with 10 locations? Then you get times it by whatever it is. You know? so I'm saying, if I do random times 5, how many locations is it giving me? It's only giving you one number. This is returning one number. The number it's return is going to be a number from 1 to 4. Top pl point I'm something. Really, yeah. Oh, 1 to 4. So, so if it's 10, but I have 7 spaces. But I have 7 spaces. It can't be 0, because it, math rent won't turn 0. It'll turn... But I have 7 spaces. Right, but we're, we're going to get this space 1 and then just plus 3 from that space. Well, 5 plus, oh, you're saying it's 4 plus 3? 4, 5, 6. Why did it that way? It's a good question. I guess well, maybe because... No, they said 5, location 5. Location 5, it'll never be 5. Exactly. So one by one. Random, random, you know, he's right, because random number is 5, and random number plus 1 is 6. Random Think is about five. the random is 1. But so No, 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 but, but it'll never be 5. It can only be 4, because I'll tell you why. why? Math random will never, look. We'll start at zero. Yes. Look, it'll never be, That's why I was asking yeah. that question. Look, if, if I do a calculator and I do math random, we'll always do something between zero and one, but not zero or one. MR is so math say random? So what? it's zero point math at random. One, zero you can point type one. down the numbers, by the way. Oh, OK. Whatever. So let's just see. So we have, say, point 0.5. five. OK, so this, is the, so this is the random number that came back, right? If I do times 5, we get 2.74. The integer will then make it into 2. Yeah. So then we'll have over here two, three, and four of the spots. Yeah. So Mendel's question is why can't you just do times six? Because anyways, if I do even point, watch this. If I do even point nine, 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 nine. Oops. If I do. Why is it doing that? Point. This times five. five. It'll still be this, which will be four. And you have four, okay. five, but six. But if you're gonna do times six, it's gonna be five, nine, nine. And, but you're truncating so it. it's going to be 6, 7, 8. No, no, no. Because 5.99, when you integer it, won't make it 6. It'll make it 5. So yeah. those questions are valid. Why, right. Right. So now it's going to make it 4, 5. Four it times it. If you really? times it by integer seven. doesn't round it. It makes it just truncates all the decimals. So if, you think times, if you times it by oh. 7, it can go to 6.9. The question is here. No, but, it, but, but you can't do that. Because we're just wait. adding on over here. one, two. Yeah. Right. Right. No, no. Are, you add, are you adding there 3 or are you adding 2? Because random number, two. the first one is one, and then random plus one, random plus two is two more numbers. So it's actually six numbers, not seven. You're right. You're you're right. You could have done times six in the program. Still but I think it's above four point five. It's doing five. No, 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 no. Sure? That would be a round. We're not rounding here. We're just, we're just converting to integer. We're just tr we're just trying. And what if I wanted four spaces? I have to change the random uh, math random. One time. What if I had four spaces? I would have to change it. You have to do times whatever it is. You know, the, the point is just. Remember that it returns something between 0 and 1, and it's not 0 or 1. It's in between that. Then you have to just deal with it however you want to deal with it. Um, that's, yeah, that's one of their weird so things. OK. Um, OK, so a while loop only has a Boolean test, well, like we showed before. Right. If you want to 
you put in here, whatever the, whatever the increments by, it might, not even have an, it might not even have an increment. Like we said before, if it's just looping on forever until we have a breakpoint, it might never have an increment. You just loop around the building always until you see something broken in and call release and then stop. Okay, but in general, use a for loop. It's a lot cleaner. That's it. No, no, you know, they look like that. In the what? Look like. Okay, we're almost done, guys. Let's finish all this ready. Okay, to force the compiler to jam the value of a bigger primitive variable into a smaller one, you can use the cast operator, which is just parentheses plus whatever you're casting it to. Again. Casting primitive says this. So watch. Casting? casting means we're going to just Revert. force it into a smaller one. So look over here. So we have long y equals 42. In general, you cannot put this inside an integer. Yes. The compiler will fail. Mm -hmm. If we do this right before the y, the so compiler you says change fine. change it to it. There we go. OK, and remember, this will work even if I make this. Oh, hey, let's here. Here's a good example. If the value of y is bigger than the maximum value of x, say you're putting a long into an integer, then what's left will be a weird number. Still, the point is the compiler lets you do it. So be careful. For example, if long y equals 40,002, which never fits into an integer, and I do put it to short, sorry, and I, I'm, I, I use this to cast it, it'll turn into this. Mine. Okay, because the compiler just tries to truncate it, whatever, however it does it. So just be careful how you use casts, because you, if you mess up, the compiler's not going to catch you, and you can have some weird results. So make sure you know what you're doing before you use the cast. Oh, you can do start the external program. Well, no, that's, so that's the whole... Okay, this is the end of the chapter. We're going to discuss issue programming. This is just notes of what issue programming is. And really... Yeah, to be a programmer, you need to follow up. Keep it simple, stupid. Okay, let's, make, let's go through this very quickly. These are practices you should use. Make small but frequent recent releases. This is even for yourself. If you're making, say, a game, like we do for the homework, don't Think of the whole thing at once. Make the small ship yeah. and test a ship. Then we do the tester first. But do, don't do the whole thing. Make a ship and test it. See what, if you can do it. Then build this. Then build that. Uh -huh. Use small pieces and make sure a piece works by itself. Then Good. Make them together. Then work together. Never go for one mass release. I'm do the whole game in one shot and try it by the end and see if it works. Don't do that. You'll never, it'll never work. It'll be chaos always because now it won't work. You'll start cleaning it up. You don't want to fix the band aids because you messed up. You should start to turn to mess. Small part and then connect them to people. Next thing, develop in iteration cycles. This is basically the same thing as the first one. Basically, do it in cycles. Don't do it one shot. Keep on doing changes, and that's how you do it. Mm. Means that you'll in 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 systems when you, when you're developing for companies, there's things called development, okay, QA, and production. Sometimes they're called production live. Basically, this means is that. You develop around your own machine, whatever it is. Then you send it off to QA, and then it goes to production, which means the user can use it. Oh. Don't develop something where you have, okay, guys, I'm going to develop a game that go that's going to be working, and I'm going to use it at once to test, and it's going to be in live. No. Develop one part of it that works fine, and then put it into live, QA into live. The next part, and put it into live. In other words, you have working pieces that work, even if it's this small, and then add another piece that's small and it's working, and then another piece small and works. So you send every piece. Every piece, yeah. You send to QA? To QA and then even to live. In other words, and it's on touch with together. With that? Who's you, you have to put it together. You have to make the scripts. The point is that you develop in small workable cycles. That's something here that's partly done, and I'm going to work on the next piece and get that one partly done too, and then we'll mix it together and find it. No. Get one done, perfect, polished, boom. Next one, perfect, polished, boom. Next one. And it can be the same piece. It can be, you know, here's a ship, and later on we'll add the guns, but right now it works yeah. perfectly fine as is. Then you add the guns. Then you add, you know, Okay. Don't put anything that's not in the spec, no matter how tempted you are to put in functionality for the future. Don't be stupid. And don't put the gun. Don't be smart. Yeah. If it's, if, it's, if the client doesn't ask for it or the boss doesn't, you don't need it. If you're saying, "Oh, I'll make a cool game," but maybe later on, don't put it in there. Okay. Write test code first. We already learned that rule, but keep to that. Don't get tempted to go on make the class and then make a test. Write the test first. Work regular hours. Don't do the schedules. That's very important. You get burnt out. Rule number five. I, I can't. I can't comply with rule number five. You, 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 it's a big temptation. But I'm telling you. I pulled up all nighters. The only reason I got up to chapter five is because of crazy schedule. Then you, you know, it's, I'm telling you, you should, you should, you have to rethink. I'm telling you. If you, if you, I'll tell you what the problem is. There's two big problems that I've seen over the what years. What does you mean, no schedule? Like you just said, work all nighters every so often. Oh, be lucky. Like I used to do. I, 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 machines here now. And I, if I'd be home, just to run stuff. 
Um, the the reason why you can't do it, number one, is if you, if you you get burnt out. Okay. Number two is you have employees; they'll get burnt out and they'll leave. I left some companies because they they, they gave me the work workload that demanded this because guess what? I left, and like they lost out too much, too much and too much at one time, and they didn't they. I don't mind working, but it, it was working midnight. It's crazy. Yeah, and it, so it, you'll lose your employees. You really will. That company lost good employees. I'm not by myself. I'm not other employees that they lost. And they, it's you can't get these guys back. They're, you lose good employees. It's not. It's not bad if you if you go on their site now. There's glass door that looks at your company to see for employees to who they want to join, and they have bad ratings. So it really ruins your image. Number three, and this is the main one. This is really the main one. If you depend working at nighttime, you won't learn how to work during the daytime. You waste your days. You go, okay, I'm working. Yeah, I'm just going to look at this site and look at Twitter and look at you, what you do. I'll work later on tonight. You'll push it off and become a procrastinator. And at nighttime, you'll get these crazy hours and you just ruin your life. Learn how to work during the daytime from 9 to 5, I'm telling you. I know. It's, it's, right. it's, it's, it, it sounds like, I'm not going to do this. It's, it's boring to the daytime. I want to get out. I'm telling you, you're only 9 to 5. You can work in a room with no windows. Do that. I'm just telling you, if you depend at all matters, yeah. you're going to, I'm telling you, it's going to. Wait, 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 wait. What's the name of the site? ColdTurkey.com. Download it? it and use it. What is it? ColdTurkey.com. It blocks you from using different sites and applications. Okay. Use it. It'll be a lifesaver. What does it mean? The like Skillsoft e learning site. It'll block you. It's a blocking you. I don't want I don't want to go to YouTube during nine to five. Yeah. I don't want to go to Reddit. I don't want to go to these stupid comedy sites. Send us off. <laughs> Just please come back shortly. Cold turkey? Yeah, but you can do it in your in your router. You can set it up in your router. This is better, because not now, now, now it's get cold turkey. No, I should be cold turkey again. It's get cold turkey. No, that's so not it. Eight list. distractions, cold turkey okay. will temporarily okay, cool. block you off. Uh, okay, okay, guys, let's, let's, let's finish off quick. He's got to go. Last thing. Last thing, guys. Refactor as much as possible. That means if you see something in your code that can, can be better, do it. Next thing. Don't release until you pass all the tests. These are your test codes. Next thing. Make realistic schedules for small things. Don't don't give a guy, a guy ask you how long we've done, give it a whole... Say this piece could be done this time, this piece and that time. Work with small pieces. Yeah. Keep it simple. Don't try to make it crazy. Oh, okay. And last thing, program and peers. We'll learn about this later on, so ignore that for now. Okay. Okay, yeah. See you guys. I put I put well, zero, zero dollars I'm donating and I'm and I'm and I'm giving that ninety percent yeah, to charity. Uh what, what, what are you finding? Moving? Uh what do you want to go? Huh? What do you want to go?